Hey guys, it's Morgan coming to you with the Idaho trip prep video. Um, I am here right now to talk to you about what it takes and what I'm doing to get a bike ready and my gear and my van and all that ready to go up to a trip. <sighs> to go up to Idaho for an awesome riding trip. This trip is going to be episode number three of the Ride the World series of awesomenesses, uh, which is a series of riding events that's gonna just keep going and going, hopefully for many, many, many years and around the world, uh, trying to gather people from all over uh, the riding community, actually get us together riding face-to-face, -to -face, having fun, and not just on the internet. But we're trying to use the internet for good and not for evil <laughs> to actually get people together to have fun and stuff like that. So anyway, without further ado, here's what we're doing to the 300 named Daisy to get her ready to go to Idaho. Uh, let's start with, I think, one of the most important things um, besides air filter, oil change, all that stuff. I'm not going to go into that. Obviously, we're going to change the oil, clean and service the air filter. Um, check the coolant, all that normal service stuff. So let's just put, I guess, we'll start with full service. We're gonna start with a full service, go through the whole thing. But one of the big things, if I'm going on a big trip, the last thing I wanna do is get to somewhere super rad and have a flat. You guys know how I feel about um, mooses. Anyway, I run them all the time, no matter what. But especially on a trip, if you guys are like me and you save up your money, you work really hard and you're taking some time off and you're gonna go on a trip, the last thing you wanna do is get a flat and ruin a day or even a half an hour of your ride. So I highly recommend Nitro Mooses. We've got the Nitro Moose Platinum uh, NM18305 wrapped inside of a Kenda Gauntlet, which is the 130-80-18 uh, Gauntlet. And then I've got the Platinum Moose NM21220 in the Bridgestone M59. Now, Nitro Moose's chart says that the M59 takes the NM21-235. You can jam that thing in that tire, but it is really, really hard, and it makes for a really, really stiff tire uh, for quite a while. So I like the 220 better, um, but I am a huge fan of Nitro Moose. Yes, they do sponsor me. Yes, they give me mooses, but that is only after I have purchased tons and tons myself. Um, also, they are the only ones I sell here at the shop. Um, I do like Michelin mooses. I like Pirelli mooses a lot, um, but I just think the Nitro mooses, you get more bang for your buck. Um, they've had problems in the past with fitment, but they've got that, I think, sorted out. I really haven't had any issues recently, so. Um, so there we go. Start with that, right? Um, obviously, chains, sprockets, all that stuff, guys. You gotta make sure all that is good. Uh, one thing to probably talk about, let's see if we can find here, is the master link clip on your chain because most, things, oh look, look, I'm finding things right here. See that? <laughs> it's missing a bolt. So I need to get a bolt back in there. <laughs> That's awesome, the bolt back in there. Um, but the master link clip, it's, it's probably, back behind, anyway, I don't know where it is, but um, you wanna look at that and make sure it's not worn down. Let's see if we can find, oh, there it is, I found it. Let's see if we can get it out here so you can see it. There we go. All right, so if you take a look, focus. There we go. Take a look at that. That is not that bad um, at all. It's a little worn on this outside edge, but it's okay. That's just from it going through this plastic. Uh, I'm not gonna change that right now. I'm gonna have uh, lots of spares with me, uh, both on the trail and in the van. Um, but yeah, so definitely something to take a look at. Another thing that you don't wanna have, ha you know, cause a problem on your big trip that you're having a lot of fun on. Um, other thing, I highly recommend if you haven't, if your suspension hasn't been serviced in a while, Right before a big trip is a good time to do it because um, it's amazing how much better a bike handles with um, fresh oil and seals and bushings and all that stuff. So I just did the shock on this. Uh, the forks are still uh, pretty low hours actually since Brady valved them uh, from TBT, so I'm not gonna fiddle with that. Uh, I think the forks would be just fine. Um, let's see, pipe, wanna make sure your pipe, O-rings are sealing, everything's uh, sealing up really good. 
Also, you just go through the bike and make sure you got all the protection you need. We're going up into the big gnarly rock, so we got uh, radiator guards, we got uh, breakaway levers from Bulletproof Designs, all, you know, same with, that's Bulletproof Designs, Bulletproof Designs breakaway levers, got our hand guards from Enduro Engineering, um, got our System Tech Racing front disc guard, and we got a System Tech Racing rear disc guard right there. Uh, Carbon up clutch cover, which this, by the way, quick note, that is the newer version of the carbon up clutch cover. Um, I had the other one and I didn't have any issues other than I did have one crash which caused it to kind of poke its little, the gasket to poke out and have an issue. Um, but I actually was able to just reuse that gasket, no problem. But then uh, the guys at Carbon Up sent me a new version and I've had zero issues with that. It's been really, really good. And I crash a lot, so <laughs> no problems. Um, other thing, guys, talk about these bags. I'm really excited about trying these bags out. Let me show you right now kind of how they open up. Uh, I've got a whole video of installing it, but like these things are cool. Clip there, clip there, clip there, and they roll out. Boom, I'm gonna have one of these in each bag uh, to start the day because um, with the RK Tech head, and the jetting I'm running, this bike is running brilliantly, but uh, it doesn't get the best gas mileage. I get about 75, 80 miles out of this tank, depending on how I am on the gas. Um, so I'm gonna be carrying extra gas just in case. Uh, I'm gonna be carrying extra two-stroke oil. Also, really, I love this thing. This is the E-Trex uh, 10, 20, and 30 mount from Rost off-road, there it is. Uh, they are out of South Africa. I had to order it from South Africa, I believe. Is I think it came right from South Africa. Uh, and it is brilliant. So I got that mounted up on the Mako 360 dashboard and ready to rock and roll for that. So I'll be um, getting uh, I'll be getting GPX tracks for everything we do. So if you guys are interested and you want my tracks, let me know. Feel for I will share them you can just email me at morgan at highland-cycles.com and i'll get you those tracks next thing guys when you're planning a big trip whether it be to idaho colorado utah whatever um you got to make sure you're legal where you're going most states require an ohv sticker idaho does there it is right there that is my my idaho ohv sticker it's good um till december 31st 2021 they the way they work it is it's from December 31st to December 31st. So, um, you know, I got in late, I guess, whatever. Anyway, it's $12. Please just buy your sticker. Even if you're in the middle of nowhere, you never see a human, just buy the sticker. Uh, it helps support trails. It helps support everybody involved. Anyway, it's a good thing. So we got that, we're ready to go. The next thing, really the last thing I have to do, this bike is all ready to go. I've already serviced and gone through everything. Um, but the last thing I need to do is I'm putting the chainsaw mount back on the front of this bike because uh, Idaho is one of those states where the trails are so, so steep. I mean like steep, steep, uh, crazy. You're going side hill. If a big tree falls across, you're not going over it. It's not just like, oh, let's hop that tree. It could be a ride right down to the bottom of the canyon. So um, I'm putting the chainsaw mount back on so I can carry a saw because I don't want to get stuck. Um, I know people who've gotten like 60, 70 miles into a ride and it's only like another 20 or 15 to the gas station that they know is there, but they can't get around the giant tree that's in the way. And now they have to either reverse the whole thing or do something else and they can run out of gas. And anyway, it's been, it's bad. So we're definitely going to put that back on. And I got a few things I want to show you about that. So. All right. Obviously, first off, I got to get this headlight off. Um, and let me, I'm going to show you something that I've been testing now for a while and haven't been talking about because Chris and Moto Minded uh, asked me not to talk too much about it because um, they were in beta testing, but I think we're good to go now. So I have been running the Moto Minded Super Mount on this bike for the light for quite a while now. Um, and I've broken a few <laughs> of them and uh, uh, Chris has thankfully been super nice and just kept sending me new ones um, but that's partially because he's testing new material so as you saw two bolts boom it's off now I got my cool guy uh, waterproof plug that I put in the back 
And now we're done. I absolutely love the way that Chris and the Motor Minded guys have developed the light mount um, and everything. It's awesome. So this right here, let me show you. This right here is the Super Mountain. It's awesome. Uh, this is the V2. It bolts right up here and then uh, zip ties here and you know over here and then you just have these two bolts just one here one here that's obviously it's for different ones anyway bolts right up it's good it's really really sweet um the only thing i am concerned about is whether or not i can leave that there um and, oh but hold on by the way so chris has been experimenting with new uh pla for his uh printers for the 3d printers and I'm telling you, I think that he's got a good one. It's been burly. It has had no issues, no cracks, no nothing. So it's been really, really good. So happy about that. Now, the one thing I am concerned about is whether or not I'm going to be able to get this chainsaw mount on here with this on here. I really don't want to have to take it off every time. Um, so we're going to find out. I think I can. Uh, the biggest thing is that the chainsaw mount bolts up in here also. Um, but I think I can do this uh, without it. Um, also, other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hog out some material on this fender so I can get in here to these bolts easier with the chainsaw mount. That's the one thing about the build art chainsaw mount that drives me nuts is trying to get those bolts in is a, it's just not easy. So uh, let me go grab some stuff and we'll get after it. All right, guys, like I mentioned, these bolts down here can be a real bear to get to um, when you're putting the chainsaw mount on. So I'm gonna take my uh, die grinder here and I'm gonna just hog out some of this material and make it so it's easier to get in. All right guys, I got her on there with the V2 super mount. Um, you can see I got some kind of funkiness going on here. It's trying to bend this up and out. Uh, so I need to solve that. I think I got an idea for that, but the other thing that I did, I showed you is hugging those out. That actually made a big difference on getting those bolts uh, tightened down. So, and you know, you can't see it even with the headlight on there. You can't see because I stopped um, basically where the the color changes where the headlight mount, mounts. So um, that helped a bunch. So that's awesome. I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the die grinder with a grinding wheel and I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to cut a little bit of the plastic and a little bit of this aluminum just come in like that and uh, see if I can't relieve the pressure on this um, because you know a little less plastic here is not going to make a big difference and a little bit less aluminum on this isn't going to make a difference uh, and then I think I'm good to go then I can just kind of swap back and forth between chainsaw mount headlight really really fast which is going to be awesome because um, I love the chainsaw mount and I love the headlight <laughs> um, yeah, I'm stoked. I, I'm going to grab that wheel, do that, and I'll check back in here. All right, guys, I think that turned out really good. I just relieved the plastic a little bit and not really much of the aluminum because obviously the plastic gave way first, but that made it line up. They look the same on both sides now, so I think we're good to go. Really happy about that. Um, thanks, Chris, for the V2 mount and all the work you've been putting into testing better plastics uh, for the printer. That's awesome. Huge thanks to Bill Dart for this beautiful uh, chainsaw mount. Um, Bill didn't give me this, I bought it, but um, I just wanna thank Bill because it's an awesome mount. Um, sweet, I'm gonna slap the chainsaw on here and then let's go take a look at the gear I'm taking. All right guys, so now let's take a look at the gear that I'm taking to Idaho. I'm bringing a lot because we're gonna be riding for three full days and you just never know what the weather's gonna do, what crashes might happen, all that kind of stuff. So let's take a look here guys. We'll start over here on the left. We got my big lit gear bag, which I really, really like. Holds everything very, very well. Uh, lots of goggles, both 100% and lit goggles. Garnet SG12s, hands down the best boots I've ever worn, ever. Mobius knee braces, I love them. I just go on and on about those. Lots of sets of knee sleeves. Fly Formula uh, Carbon Helmet. Then we got uh, a bunch of pairs of socks. Then we got Adventure Spec uh, compression shorts, Climb Dakar pants, Climb Dakar jersey, and Mojave jersey. Never know if it's going to be hot or cold. We got my Adventure Spec pants. They're awesome. 
brand new uh, Wolf Enduro jersey. Love that thing. Then we have Adventure Spec Atacama Race Shell uh, for waterproofness and Adventure Spec Lineman's Jacket for um, warmth. That guys is gonna take very, very, very good care of me. I'm really excited, so blessed to be able to have all that stuff to take. I know not a lot of people are able to afford to have all this stuff to take on a trip. Uh, so I know this isn't maybe representative of everybody out there going on moto trips, but um, anyway, for me, I'm very lucky to have all this stuff. Thank you guys, thank you all my sponsors. Uh, if there's anybody else out there that wants to give me stuff to test, trust me, I'm the guy to test it. So I will beat on it. All of this stuff has been already beaten on hard and long, and so I know I can trust it when I get in the backcountry. All right, now let's take a look inside the van. All right, guys. So, in the van, got my wolf vest filled with all my stuff. Uh, I got oh, uh, all my tools, first aid, everything. I have an entire video on that vest. Uh, if you guys ever want to watch that, just search it up. I think it's like, what do you bring? I can't find it. It's buried in there, but it's awesome. Uh, showing everything I bring. Um, these are my kids' vests. I'm actually going to leave those at home um, because they're not coming and uh, they won't fit my big friends. So, I uh, got chairs here. Got the, it's hard to see. Boom, there we go. Uh, Enduro Engineering uh, stand. I'll be showing all this stuff when we're up there and get it all set up. I'll show you a little bit deeper into everything. Van has the loft for gear bags while we're driving. This slides back and makes a bed. I'll be sleeping up here. Brady and Foxy Bibbs will be sleeping down here on cots. Got the bolted on three mount uh, thing. I don't know what you call it. Anyway, holds three bikes really, really well. Um, that thing's awesome. Seriously, check out boltedon.com. That thing will come out in like two minutes. And actually when we get there, I'll show you kind of how we're gonna set this whole thing up. Um, because when we get to Smiley Creek to set up, we'll take the back seat out, set it out where we can use it to sit in it, and then we'll have, we'll take that uh, mount out so we can pass through here easily, uh, even easier. Over here on this wall, we've got chest protector, extra water bags, another rain jacket just in case. Here's my toolbox. Uh, let me show you what kind of things we have in the toolbox. Um, also, if you're wondering, uh, this toolbox is from Harbor Freight. It's a side box is what it's supposed to be for one of their bigger boxes, but they're really nice, all roller bearing drawers. Um, yeah, it's awesome. It locks up, it's great. So let's take a look inside the Highland Cycles toolbox for travel. Top thing, we got sockets. We got, these are the bolts that help to uh, secure the bed when it comes back towards me. Uh, so anyway, sockets, T-handles, just an eight and a 10 T-handle. Um, lots of pliers, pliers wrenches, which are the best, um, chain breaker, uh, spoke wrench, axle wrench, all kinds of snap ring pliers, for doing wheel bearings if we need to. Then we got Torx, Allens, all the jets uh, for all of my bikes, uh, spring puller, all that good stuff. We got wrenches, both gear wrenches and normal wrenches. These things are really nice, uh, super thin. Uh, I mean, really, really thin. They're cool too. They're a small set. They got, you know, uh, six, seven, eight, nine. Anyway, uh, those are really nice. Those are snap-on. These are blue point. Uh, this is my. Um, right now, it's <laughs> it's kind of empty, but this is my uh, helmet light setup. So helmet light, battery. This is the pack actually for that stuff. This is the tool or the parts uh, bin. Throttle cable, brake pads, wheel bearings, hammer, chain lube, uh, extra bolts, um, stupid pump for dumb air forks, uh, brake fluid, safety wire, yeah, WD-40, levers, spark plugs, super glue, all kinds of things. And then down here is tubes for my kids, uh, well, for Ewan. He's the only one that runs tubes in the family because he's still on a mini bike. Extra two-stroke oil, quick to mix, gas for the jet boil to make coffee. And then these are my L brackets that go up in here when I slide this thing back and set it down. And then this is my molly pack for the back of the thing. And I got a few extra uh, straps and uh, bungees in there. So, like I said, this thing's awesome. You just lock it up. 
then you're good. Got blue towels here. Got my thing for my brake on my KTM because for whatever reason it likes to lose pressure while it sits. Uh, cheap uh, table from Walmart, which is awesome for camping and all that good stuff. Gas can. Oh. Anyway. Gas can and gas can holder. Gas can holder made by my good friend Jeff Comer. Um, actually, if anybody's interested, he can make you anything like that with whatever logo you want. You want KTM, Husky, whatever. Anyway, uh, he made me Yamaha because he knows the Yamaha. Despite the fact I got rid of my YC250, uh, Yamaha is still my favorite brand. <laughs> I love my KTMs, but I just... Anyway, I love Yamahas. Um, yeah, then we got our ramp lives right here for folding out we're all good um see oh some people have asked this that is a cargo net i got off of amazon it's hooked to the ceiling by carabiners here and then it comes up under here and hooks to these to keep things from sliding forward i mean in a big crash it may not stop everything but in a big crash um there's probably a lot more going on that's not good i like this is my homemade setup. I've got more L-Track I gotta put down low and I wanna put some more anchor points to like strap things to hold them tight against the thing. But right now, I have that little L-Track down there and just some bungees and that actually helps really, really well to hold these things in, so. All right, let's just look at the inside up here real fast. Just kinda what it looks like for riding. Uh, you can see, lots of room for big people. I got that seat way back. It comes out super easy, you just pull these hinges or these latches thing comes right out uh right under there coffee box that has all my stuff to make coffee <laughs> which is awesome uh there's a little buddy heater which is good and then yeah uh, there we go that little bag right there has my extra gear that's just got one set of gear and socks in it just in case i forget <laughs> um and then ooh, let me show you this i'm actually pretty proud of this um, this, I actually have a real first aid kit. It's got really good stuff in it. Sam Splint, light. Uh, then over here, I got goggle cleaning stuff right there. This is more lights and a, oh, a knife or something like that. Um, and then, yeah, this is what this looks like from here, keeping stuff from flying forward. Yeah, so uh, for cooking gear, guys, this thing is one of my favorite things ever. It's a charbroil, I don't know what the name of it is, but it's pretty sweet. It's an actual real like infrared style uh, grill. Hooks to either like the little propane bottles or I have a big um, uh, hose to hook it up to a big bottle. Then we got big Polaris cooler, which is just like the Yeti cooler, little Yeti cooler for drinks or whatever. Uh, this is the other camping box. I'm not going to go into all that. So there's the van. There's the gear I'm taking. Um, i got to keep getting ready. All right, guys. Now let's take a look at some of the electronic stuff that we're bringing. Uh, and this is all just for you guys because, well, some of it's for us. But uh, <laughs> I'll show you here. So take a look. We are taking GoPro Hero 9 and lots of batteries. We've got lens covers, screen protectors, things for that. Lots of extra SD cards. We got Garmin's. We got the eTrex 22X for navigation. We got the Garmin InReach Mini for communicating with people if something goes wrong. Got a power bank here. I don't know who even makes this thing. Uh, but anyway, it's awesome. It'll charge your phone like 8,000 times or something like that. Anyway, GoPro Hero 8 with the um, mic package on it for uh, talking, whatever like that. We got tons of batteries for that. Uh, then we got the Bill Dart maps. Guys, I cannot recommend these maps enough. These things are awesome. Uh, they're all, well, they're not handwritten, but anyway, he has gone out. Bill Dart is Mr. Dirt Bike, and he has been out all over Idaho and put everything in here. He's got things like one of my favorite, like, see, there we go. It says, stay on north side of Creek and above Willows. Um, that's a double black trail. That's going to be hard. It's got gas and food there. Um, this right here is Smiley Creek Lodge where we're staying. There's gas and food there. Um, and then trails all over. And it's, anyway, it's a ton of them. Let's see. We got one, two, three, four, five, six maps. But there's one on each side. So like 12 maps. Um, highly recommend them. I think they're only like 50 bucks for the whole set shipped. So anyway, that's going to be awesome. 
All right, so the camera that I'm holding him is also going to go with it, so we can do some hopefully interviews and talk to the guys that are at the uh, ride. This is the Sony FDR. AX, or excuse me, AX53. It's a 4K, uh, 30, 24, 30 frames per second. Anyway, I like this camera a lot. This is what I shoot all my uh, schlogs on and all that stuff. Anyway, it's awesome. Joby thing that I'm, anyway, whatever. You guys don't need to see that. It's not that cool. Um, but yeah, so that's the electronic stuff that's going with us. That's all the camera gear. Oh man, I'm really excited though. So. Gotta keep after it. <laughs> All right, guys, everything's pretty much ready to rock and roll. We're getting ready to head out. When you guys are seeing this, we are going to be on our way to Idaho. We are publishing this thing Thursday morning as we drive our happy butts to Idaho to go have a ton of fun. So make sure you subscribe and make sure you share this with your friends because we're going to have a ton of awesome content coming out from this trip. Uh, ride videos, reviews. It's going to be awesome, guys. Seriously, seriously awesome. Thank you for watching. I hope you get out and spread the gospel of two wheels. I hope that what we're doing here at Highland Cycles is inspiring you guys to maybe take a trip and go ride your dirt bikes!